properties of logarithms. In our last video, we did talk a little about the change of base formula, and we used this middle function on your screen because it helped us when we were trying to evaluate a logarithmic function that had a base other than 10, because we know in our calculators the log button is a common log, and that has a base of 10. Now, we did not talk about that you could use a natural log, and again, this would help us using our calculators because your calculator does have a natural log button, and we just know that that has a base of E, so it's really using this first property and just rewriting with a base of E. Uh, but again, the first property says if you have a base of A and you want to rewrite it with a base of B, then you're taking the log of that new base of X and then the log of that new base of the original base. Let's talk now about some properties of logarithms. These will add to the properties that we already learned when we learned about logarithmic functions. And the first is the product property. And the product property says that if you are taking the log of a product, then you can simply separate out that product and separate with a plus sign. So in the same way that if I had three squared times three to the fourth, we would take two plus four is six. That's the same thing I'm doing here. If I have a product, I can separate it out. And the reason that we would do that is, of course, to do the calculations in our head as opposed to doing everything on a calculator. And we can do the same thing, whether that's a log base A, log base 10, natural log, which is log base E, all of that property is the same. The next property um, is the quotient property. And again, just as if I had three to the fourth divided by three squared, we would take four minus two and subtract to get three squared. If I have a quotient, a log of a quotient, I can take the log logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. And I can do that for either a log, common log, natural log, and so forth. And the last is the power property. We did speak about this a little bit when we talked about the inverse property when we first learned about logarithms, but this is basically saying if you have an exponent, you can move it to the front, or if you have a value that is being multiplied by a logarithm, you can move it to an exponent. Let's try our hand at simplifying some logarithms. And the difficult or easy, depending on your frame of mind, thing about simplifying logarithms is that there's often more than one correct way to do it. So as I'm working through this, if you arrive at the same answer that I do, but in a different method, you did just fine. So we'll start with log base three of the fifth root of three. So in working through this one, whenever you have a root, it's always a good idea to rewrite the value using an exponent instead. So instead of the fifth root of three, it's three to the one fifth. Now that's not a property of logarithms, that's a property um, of exponents. So now that I've rewritten this, I can use the property of the power property, which is a property of logarithms, to rewrite this as one fifth and then log base three of three. Now, what is log base three of three? Remember, that's just saying three to what power is three, and that would be three to the first. That's just using that swirly that we talked about. And so I would get one fifth times one, which is one fifth. Second question, again, lots of correct methods to do this one. I chose to use the quotient property. Because I have a subtraction, I can write this as natural log of e sorry, not six to the sixth, e to the sixth divided by e squared, which reduces to natural log of e to the fourth. And now I'm going to use the power property to rewrite that as four times the natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e is again like a log base e, so e to the what power is e, and again, that is one, so four times one, which is just four. Now, if you instead 
um, did it in a different way by saying this is six times the natural log of e minus two times the natural log of e, you would get six times one minus two times one, which still gives you four as a solution. Next question, let's expand. So I'm going to expand log base five. There's more than one correct answer here. Um, for instance, four, I could rewrite that as two squared. So I can either have log base five of four, or I might have two times the log base five of two. I'm going to leave it log base five of four because that makes the most sense to me. Um, if it were a two here, obviously I would do it the other way so that I had, um, I could reduce. But since I can't, I'm now just going to put a plus. Now my next value is x squared. I'm going to chain, turn the two into a product using that power property. So that's two log base five of x. So I just put that two to the front and then plus log base five of y. So this is a correct solution. Or if you had log two log base five of two plus all of that, that would be correct as well. Next question, natural log of the square root of two X plus one divided by six. This is a division question. So be super careful here because it's tempting to say, well, this has, this is the um, two X plus one to the one half. So I'm going to put one half times the natural log of two X plus one divided by six, but that would be incorrect because this six is not to the one half power. So be careful the order in which you do this question. Um, I'm going to first write it as the natural log of two X plus one to the one half minus the natural log of six. And then of course I can use the power property. So one half times the natural log of two X plus one minus the natural log of six is how I would expand to that. Now let's condense. So going in reverse, write it as a single logarithm. So before I do that, let's do power property. So that condensing is gonna be the last step. So this is now log of X to the one third. And then this is plus log of X plus one squared and now because it's a plus this is going to be a product so this is the log of the cubed root of x multiplied by x plus one and let's finish up with our last question again this is a natural log i'm going to use the power property to rewrite that as natural log of x plus three to the fourth power minus natural log of x. This is subtraction, so I'm going to write it as a quotient of x plus three to the fourth power divided by x. Now you know if you watch any of my videos that it is not in my nature to make a video less than 10 minutes. I struggle to keep them under 20. Um, so I add in an extra slide just of practice. So if you're feeling comfortable with it, feel free to skip the practice. Um, but it is good, you know, to practice where you know the solution. So if you would, press pause, try all the questions. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. I did throw a couple of easy ones and a couple of more difficult ones in here. The first one, log base 3 of 9. Remember, essentially we're saying 3 to what power is equal to 9. So this is a very simple one. Three squared is equal to nine. So log base three of two, I'm sorry, log base three of nine is equal to two. Didn't have to do anything on that question. For the next question, I do have to do a little bit of work. We can see that this is a quotient. So I can rewrite this as the natural log of one minus, and then e to the one half, this is going to be natural log of e to the one half natural log of e to the one half can be written as one half natural log of e and i can even do more on this one so the natural log of one remember we're saying you know e 
to what power is equal to 1? So that's e to the 0 power is equal to 1, because anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. And then I have 1 half, and then I have the natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e says e to what power is equal to e, and that's 1, e to the first power. So my final solution is just negative 1 half. Final question on the first row, I have log base 4 of 16. So instead of doing this, which many of us probably wanted to do, I don't really feel like squaring 16 and then finding 4 to what power is 16 squared. So instead, I'm just going to evaluate log base 4 of 16. 4 to what power is 16? Well, 4 to the second power is 16. And then same thing, log base 2 of 8. 2 to what power is 8? Well, 2 to the third power is 8. So this is 4 plus 3, which is 7. I also want to point out before we move on to expanding that I could not rewrite this as a single, um, single logarithm. I couldn't use those condensing products, uh, sorry, properties that we've been using because this is base 4 and this is base 2, and they have to have the same base in order to be able to do that. So next questions have to do with expanding. So we are going to expand log base 2 of xy to the fourth power. So again, this 4 is on both x and y. So I'm going to put 4 on the outside, and then I've got log base 2 of xy. And now I can use the product property that says log base 2 of xy can be written as log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y. Um, some of you may have gotten the answer of 4 log base 2 of x plus 4 log base 2 of y or log base 2 of x to the fourth plus log base 2 of y to the fourth. These are all equivalent. Um, but I would say this is the best way to go considering we're working on expanding. Next, we've got natural log of the cube root of t. This one's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to rewrite the cube root of t, of t as t to the one-third, which means now I can rewrite this as one-third natural log of t. Last, I've got the natural log, and then I've got a quotient, and within the quotient, I have a square root. I'm going to rewrite it as natural log of 3 minus the natural log of, and instead of doing this in two steps, I'm just going to do it all as one. One half, because it's the square root, whoops, and then natural log, and then x squared plus 1. Um, before I move on, I do want to point out, just because I've seen students make that mistake, this is not something that can be moved to the front because it's within the expression itself. It's not the expression to the second power. It's just a, an element to the second power. Lastly, let's do some condensing. So writing this as a single logarithm. First step on any of these would be to go ahead and use the power property to rewrite so we don't have those values out front. And then I've got a plus and a minus, so I'm going to write log base 3, and then x cubed, and then I've got y to the 1 fourth, so that's the fourth root of y. And again, those are being multiplied because it's an addition, but then it's being subtracted the log base 3 of z to the fourth is being subtracted, so that is going to go in the denominator. And lastly, again, I'm going to do some simplification. I'm going to leave this first one here for just a minute. Here I've got the natural log of x plus 1 times x minus 1. Again, it's multiplied because it is a plus. I can go ahead and do some work there. Um, natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. That's what I get when I FOIL that out. And then that leaves me with the natural log of x divided by x squared minus 1 
because it is now a quotient. Coming up next, we're going to work on solving exponential and logarithmic equations.